What's going on, beautiful people? It is another Venus Day Q&A. It's a beautiful time. And today is about love. I felt called to hit the record, and now I feel like I'm about to sneeze. This is the chart of the day. It is a new day. We're going to jump into questions pretty soon before we do that. Wow, I want to draw our attention to Venus. Let's do a little astrology breakdown for the day. Today is May 18th. It's a Friday. Well, actually, that's technically a Saturday. And Venus Day was the 17th. But for me personally, until, <clears throat> pardon me, until the sun rises on Saturday, I'm still going to consider it a, a Friday. This is our Venus Day Q&A. So re realistically, could have filmed this earlier, but better late than never. We are showing up today regardless, and I'm excited. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope that this brings you a lot of fun and joy. So I'm going to turn my self off for a second, and I'm going to draw your attention to the beautiful chart of the moment. And we have a pretty auspicious moment. <laughs> this is happening right now. So what we've got is the Pluto on the rising, that's pretty auspicious. This is going to be a very powerful video. So hope you guys enjoy it. The moon is in the lunar apogee. We've got this grand trine in the sky with Pluto in Aquarius. And that's pretty interesting. The gift of transformation. So Venus is in the sign of her domicile right now. What does that mean? That means mom is home. <laughs> and that means that's an abundance of love. The feminine nature is expressing itself as it should. What does that mean? <laughs> that basically means that it's time to embark on the embrace of one's own needs. I hope everybody truly does enjoy their time on earth you know venus has some interesting aspects and in configurations right now the first one that you should be seeing is that venus is conjunct uranus in the sky so the venus uranus cycle is beginning yet again and that means a higher vibration of love is coming into being and we may also start seeing some new connections within our lives and venus also could be showing us new ways to make money or meet our needs at this point and that's really beautiful. Above everything I've just said, there's going to be an increase when it comes to the energy that we have in our lives. And this is going to give us an increase within our lives, not just internally, but externally as well. And the real key here is liberation within our relationships, how we relate to ourselves, bringing more honesty in regards to our connections with ourselves and other people. So this could look like a deeper and more meaningful way of interacting with the world. And that's beautiful. That's truly an amazing thing. So I also see in this chart, I mean, this is prominent. All of the planets converse and they interact together. But pay attention to Mars on the North Node right now, guys. And just know that it's full speed ahead. It's really time to embrace the purpose. And the nodes carry a Saturnian theme. So I really feel like this kind of feels like Mars and Capricorn, even though it's Mars and Aries, literally. But what I mean by this is, you know, for those who may not be too hip with the, uh, the lingo and the language, what this really means is that there's a, a need for discipline and direction and definitive action at this point. And there may need to be severance or seclusion from that which would interrupt or present itself as a hindrance to one's destiny or goals or self-preservation and autonomy and sovereignty. So that's what I'm talking about, guys. Love is not lies, and love won't make you compromise your true being or purpose. And if you have something that's making you shrink or, you know, bend your reality to something that's not true, that's not love. That's not a good connection, and that's a relationship we want to transcend ourselves out of, okay? Straight up. So this is a beautiful time, the sun trying the moon. You know, we caught this at perfect timing. So, so 
what I think we're going to do is pull a card or two and see what that's given. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the live part of this Q&A and we're going to get live questions from the viewers. OK, and then we'll maybe potentially do a love reading or two and. I'm trying to get the time check. So pardon me really quick, guys, while I figure out how long I've even been doing this video. I'm going to grab the cards and then we are going to just see what they're giving today. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting it going, dude. I bro. So every time I do Venus Day QA, the quality gets a little bit better and the production gets a little bit more concise. So we're working on it. Like preparation is key, but sometimes in hindsight, you only know the things that were unprepared. I just got up and my cat took my spot. She took my spot. So we have our live feed going on right now and that's exciting. So what I am gonna do is do a little love reading for the collective as we uh, transition into this part of the show. And then we'll start taking in questions suggestions or we will consult with our viewers all right so fire family welcome to the inner temple i'm so glad you guys clicked on the video or clicked on the live and i'm so glad that you're here on a venus day or a saturday or any other day of the week okay i'm back in i'm locked in I had to take the cat out of my spot. You can kick it with me, baby. But this is my chair. Oh, it's for you? Okay, right on. Well, let's see what we got, guys. So I just broke down the aspects to Venus. There's not too much going I don't want to say that there isn't too much going on because there's plenty going on. We've got Venus conjunct Uranus. That's a whole new cycle, and that's something... To be on the lookout for. And then Venus trailing the sun and trailing Jupiter. This is about the need for freedom, the need for attention, respect, and meaning, respectively. So we have to be willing to embrace our needs and find that which we can't provide for ourselves, and also be willing to discern the difference between that which we can and that which we can't okay and i thought what better card than to signify in a love reading but that oh my god <laughs> besides the lovers that wasn't the best way to get the sentence out but you guys get the point i'm looking for the lovers card and then we're gonna pull some cards for the collective so welcome tiktok i hope you guys Enjoy being a part of this live. And the replay is going to be posted on YouTube for everybody in the chat right now. So we got our lover's card here. And I'm going to turn my uh, screen share back on so you guys can see the cards that I'm pulling for everybody on the YouTube video. So that's the lover's card right there. And... That just says, this is our love reading. So I'm going to start with the Oracle and then we'll see what the love situation is giving. So for those watching in the live feed, what's going on with love? Are you guys single, partnered, you married? What's going on? Love is a beautiful thing, man. And everybody in their life will have certain 
dynamics within their relationships. So you see all the answers in the comments, you know, boyfriend, a lot of single Pringles, man. Seen a lot of people partnered as well. But I'm happy for everybody. And this card says hunger in reverse. So what this speaks to me is fulfilling partnership, whether this is relationship with yourself or somebody else, this is about fulfilling partnership that leaves you not wanting something. Can I get an amen? She said her man got arrested though. Oh my goodness. So after we do this collective reading, we're going to start doing some, oh fuck. <laughs> we're going to start doing readings for the collective will start getting into specific love situations and scenarios and, you know, break that into the Q and a, can you guys hear me? Okay. On the live, because I keep getting this thing on my screen that says that people can't hear me or that my, or that my microphone is messed up. You can hear me. Okay, cool. Nice. Grateful for that. Had a great day. So Understand, guys, when there's a hunger, there must be food. I can't promise everybody's going to eat because that's not part of the guarantee. But when there's a hunger, there's food. All right? And that's what's coming up with this love scenario is that the reason that you feel love or this desire to connect is because that it, there's a counteracting force in the universe that would receive your love. You know? You said you just ate. I just ate, too. I ate butter chicken. It was so good. <laughs> Dude, I just pulled some Oracle cards. And this look, what this looks like to me is that somebody's ex may be trying to spin back. You know, when we do collective love readings, there's always a mixed bag. Well, you'll see some people are single. Some people have been married for a super long time. Some people, you know... Uh, maybe in like a polyamorous relationship. There's so many types of relationships, guys. We could list them all day, but this card says, you're my angel. And then the second card says, I love you. Please give me another chance. And <laughs> had to block that bitch, said, no, I gave you too many chances, man. Of course, I'm your angel. You're a plebeian. You don't understand life. And I'm not going to sit down here and explain it to you, bitch. Get the fuck out of my way is what that's giving <laughs> for somebody. But, uh, he said we belong together. No, the fuck we don't. <laughs> That's absolutely not. You are the karmic lesson, and I give you blessings from a distance. No, thank you. <laughs> Stop doing voodoo, Brie. See, these comments are beautiful. Your ex is locked up and blocked on the half. So a lot of people would be blocking their exes. But just understand, guys, love and lies don't really have anything to do with each other. I was saying this before I hopped on the live, but I just want to repeat this for the interest of the video, but also interest of everybody here today, man. Love is predicated on truth. To be able to love somebody, you have to accept them for who they are. Or accept something for what it is. And that's funny. I'm glad you asked because uh, this is this, this seems a little bit more, un, I don't know if it's unrelated to what we were just talking about, but in the interest of relationship dynamics, some people do want the ex back. And if that's the case, I really don't see an issue with it. I mean, as long as y'all communicate and you can agree on a relationship, it's business as usual, right? If you want to be with your ex and they want to be with you, there's no problem, but there's no use trying to be with somebody who doesn't want to be with you, you know? So I'm going to pull some tarot cards. I want to pull like maybe one more Oracle and then some tarot cards about this spread. And then we can start doing some readings for the people in the collective. Okay. We're working with our hour of a podcast. Thank you guys for interacting with the live. Thanks for being here. So this week, by the way, Venus is going to move signs. I'm like saying this almost as a question. I should be the one to tell you. 
I don't know if I can animate this uh, stream. Well, watch Mars Day with Mark. Make sure you watch the podcast if you want to actually know about the astrology more specifically. Today it is less about that and more so just about the love and the connection. Hey, I'm glad we're blessed with the inner peace, man. That's a priceless gift. I'm seeing that. So this is the card I'm getting. We belong together and let's start over. So that we belong together, that came out again, but it, it says let's start over now. So that's really, that actually kind of feels like Uranus conjunct Venus was that, you know, you may have gotten disconnected from yourself at some point in this life on some level. And now it's time to truly embrace your inner core. I'm going to try to move my phone just a little bit because maybe it's just covered. Like this mic is not meant to connect to my phone. It's connecting to my computer. But as long as you guys can hear me, it's fine. But Venus conjunct Uranus, man, that's new love. That's new connection. And regardless of what type of relationship you have within your lives, what's going on, is a deeper embrace of self because Uranus represents individuation. And on some level, that means transcendence of superficial limits, arriving at truth. This is the process of raising in vibration, increasing your vitality, but also grounding even deeper, Taurus energy. It's like the selfless embrace of self. It's welcoming more awareness into being. And one thing you'll notice with this same transit is that there is just going to be a breath of fresh air or a burst of new life. And you'll see your vital force, your energy levels likely go up. And if you want to lean into that more, you can take better care of yourself. You can get more sleep. You can get higher quality sleep. You can drink more water. You can eat better food, take your vitamins and you know, get the vitamin D and get some exercise and really put yourself in a position to be healthy, okay? Because that's what is given is like, this is a new connection with self. It's a new relationship with the person that you are. And this will totally transcend into your relationships with everybody else, man. I'm telling you, how you meet yourself is how you meet the world. So your job here really is to Love and embrace yourself. Become the person that you wish to be, the person you admire. And then give that person to others. Give that person to the world. Okay? So I'm going to pull some tarot cards. We're going to see what's going on with the collective reading. And then we'll start uh, diving into some personal questions and relationships and stuff like that. Glad that resonates with the chat. That's beautiful. So, uh, in interest of the the time we're in, man, the Virgo full uh not full moon, but the Virgo waxing moon in the in the conjunction with Lilith is really about deeping deeply working on yourself, man. That's what it is. Working deeply on yourself. That's our conversation today. And there's a reason Venus falls in Virgo. We love the work. We love when the work is done, too. But the work is never done. Work is always ongoing. And especially the self-improvement self, self -improvement and the self-mastery work, that's ongoing, you know? So really, here's the, the key, guys. We just have to be better. And being better doesn't employ, imply that anybody's worse, ourself or anyone else, but it just means that our standards have to increasingly increase. I'm not saying that for redundancy. Our standards have to increasingly increase. The only way to grow in life is to move your standards. So that's the beauty here. So if we can internalize that, growth will be pretty easy and effortless, man. I see a lot of people suffering from this lack mindset, the abundance the lack of abundance mindset, not embracing the abundance mindset. And, you know, this conversation isn't new over here. It's 111. We're working on this energy. 
all of us knows we have the resources to meet our needs, but it just takes time and energy to really grow and expand into an inner vision. And with new awareness, you're posed with new choices, man. And this is a big part of this conversation. Let me show these cards to everybody. Because this feels like either burnout or disconnection, you know, exhaustion and tiredness, and then the feeling of lack or, um, shit, the word is dysphoria. Yeah, dysphoria. So here's the, and then here's for the people on the other side of the screen. You know, you've got the burnout or the lack of connection. You've got the feeling like exhausted type of energy. And then this one is the kind of hopelessness or dysphoria energy. So <clears throat> when it comes to the relationship with self or the way that we feel about meeting our needs, man, that's this energy. And really, you know, you have to release energies to be able to master them or to be able to even have some control over them. So this conversation came up in personal readings today, uh, earlier than this video, but I'm telling you guys, it's just about sitting with your pain, truly feeling who you are. And sometimes it's the pain of the past. That's really what I get from this Uranus Venus conversation is that to, to embrace the new, we often have to confront the old and it's the pains of the past and the trials and tribulations we've experienced that really have patterned and conditioned us into this moment. And there's an interplay between the two, okay? So ultimately what we need to do is shift in mindset and get a more directness within our thought. And I see the this is crazy. So this is what I'm seeing with that 10 of pentacles in reverse. This is about truly embracing what is it that we lack? What is it that we need? Figure out how to ask for that. Figure out how to talk about that. All right, what is it that we're missing within this life? What is it truly that our heart is called for? That's really what this conversation is giving, guys. Because this is about standing in our power. And then the card underneath this is really gaining speed as well. These two would be read together in the way I'm pulling them. Gaining speed and standing in your power. So when you are standing in your power, things move a lot faster and better. So that's what's up. And then ultimately, here's the next part of that conversation. Devil and the hangman in reverse. We're never stuck, man. We always are presented with choices and options. So we just have to really lock in. And that doesn't often mean working harder. It means working smarter. All right. And that's what it is. And you guys have heard before that the world is your mirror. So what I'm kind of seeing in these two cards is that a lot of us kind of hold so much pain or frustration. It's really difficult for us to embrace what it is that we want from life or others because we don't have space to receive it. So it only makes sense that we'd be kind of frustrated or feel like we're spinning our wheels. And until we meet ourselves on a deeper level, we are not going to find the connections that we're really seeking. And sometimes it happens on a polarity where you know, reaching into the world outside of you does force upon your individuation. So I don't want to leave anybody confused, but I'm telling you, there it, it happens on both sides of the spectrum. It's just saying that wherever you go, guys, here's the key. Wherever you go, there you are. So you just have to be willing to meet others in the world on a deeper level. It's a willingness to be open. That's the key. A willingness to be open and confront the truth. All right. No excuses confront the truth. I want to make this really simple and sweet and to the point. No excuses confront the truth. All right. And, and there's going to need to be some shadow work when it comes to our lives, meaning how do we work with our unconscious desires and what effect does this have on our conscious desires? You know, I believe this was a Carl Jung quote, but if you don't understand the nature of your unconscious and subconscious, this is not verbatim, by the way. It'll dictate your life and you'll just call it fate. So we're not interested in that. We're interested in creating our own reality. We're interested in manifesting our true desires into the physical world and leaving lives and legacies of exemplary will and love. So let's get it. So we've got about half an hour left on the podcast. And this seems like a good time because this seems like a good time to, to shift into the to the viewer segment and we can do the Q&A portion 
and maybe even jump into some love questions as well. But what I'm just getting is like, life can be really simple if we just decide what we want, go after it, and then just choose to enjoy it. And that's a three-part process. It's easy as one, two, three, A, B, C. Decide what you want, go after it, and choose to enjoy it. And you'd be surprised how beautiful life can be. Ooh -wee. So these transits, you guys will be able to see on TikTok if you look at YouTube later, the video that I'm creating. The chart right now is crazy. With the Taurus stellium, there's so much love in this world. There's so much blessings. You just have to put yourself in a position to receive it. So we're not really, st we're streaming on TikTok, but the replay is going on YouTube. All right, guys. So if you have questions, if you want to even get a love reading, I think that's where we're leaning towards at this point. We got about 28 minutes. That's a magical number. Some people, and this is a, this is a deeper conversation I'm seeing in the cards, man, because this is going full circle and back to our relationship dynamics. Some people expect to be treated like shit and therefore they are treated like shit or they expect people to do them dirty and then that shit happens basically people have negative assumptions about the world and people or they have limiting beliefs about relationships and then they create their own fuckery with other people and it's not the other people it's them doing this shit so you guys let me know what questions you got and we'll we'll see what's going on. Stop, please, LOL. No, I'm good. He said your baby daddy. You were done dirty, you think? I I wouldn't doubt it. You know, this happens. Love scars, man. What if it's someone else's hand that makes it look like yours? What if it's someone else's hand that makes it look like yours? Are you saying you were framed? <laughs> I love doing these. You're wondering what happened in general with your love situation. If you give us details, we could probably get into it, Queen. How do you love awful people? It's a challenge. That's a really good question. How do you love awful people? You know, and I think it's worth defining love. Like, what is love? And we may never do this effectively, but we can try to define what love is. You know, what I think love is, is connection for the sake of, you know, empathy and support. You know, connection with that intention to feel someone, to embrace them truly and to support them. And love needs to have boundaries you know, we can talk about love being unconditional sometimes or like that being the standard, but that's not a practically useful thing in life. So like there are awful people. There are going to be people that might be the villain in your story or people that are genuinely harmful and toxic and poisonous for you. So basically the, the challenge is you got to know where your boundaries are and how to love people from a distance. And just know that, you know, if people, if people are kind of awful, let's say, and they're worthy of that judgment that warrants that, and, you know, they can have harmful, malicious actions. And if that comes from a place of hate, just understand there's nothing really wrong with hating a person who hates the world or themselves. You know, because, and, and this sucks because um, I'm also seeing, and I won't have to repeat the name just for the replay's sake, but uh, in case that matters to them, but. They're saying it's like a family member and then the family member sends them hatred back in return in exchange for their love. Like they're sending love, they're receiving hate. And it's natural, truly natural for someone in that circumstance to hate that awful person. Because in that circumstance, that relationship, think about the dynamic, the, the, the reciprocity, the scales. It's like if you're the only one putting in love, basically, and the other one's not supporting it, it's like, that's going to be frustrating as fuck. That's not valid cooperation. So communication is generally needed. Um, but that wasn't the question. It's like, how do you love somebody that's awful? You know, you're going to have to, prob that probably is the answer now that I think about it, communicate a little bit better with them. Um, draw more clear expectations, dude. 
Yeah, and it's frustrating as fuck when you choose not to be resentful or hateful when these feelings start to arise and you're like, man, I'm starting to get pissed off at you, man, because you're not fucking helping and I'm the only one trying here. It's the worst feeling to feel like you're the only one who cares. It's just the hardest when it's family. That's just simply what it is, man. Like, it's easier said than done to let him go. But it's like, what if we live with this person every day? Or what if we see them all the time? Or, And you know God is watching, too. So it's like nothing, there's nothing to be really afraid of. But I think what's the scariest is like, what's the right way to be? What's the right way to act? How do we treat people? You know, that's basically the, the issue. It's a good question, man. And I think like, <laughs> if if everybody asked that question with a genuine curiosity wanting to know the answer the world would be a far better place dude truly yeah yeah we get each other right and that's just the sad thing sometimes is that when when you are willing to give love to those that you care about even to the point of you know, unconditional levels of connection, you you sometimes do have to draw a line. What are you not willing to tolerate? Because one person can only stand so much negativity in their life, you know? And we are the company we keep. So even if it's our mom or our dad or our brother, or our sister, guys, you have to really draw the line and, and ask, you know, at what point does this start to become detrimental to my own safety or well-being? And at what point is it not supportive to the other person, you know? Because ultimately, one of my guidelines for connection and even love is that love requires honesty, love requires truth. So if a person can't listen to you, if a person can't embrace what you share with them, when they fully comprehend it, they're not choosing love. And that's pretty fucked up. But that needs to be understood on both parts or else there's just no moving forward. You know? It means a willingness to listen. So that's really key. That's really imperative. Love isn't about, you know, just forcing our way on somebody else. It's about mutual connection and understanding. Damn, Carmen. Yeah, the healing journey is not linear by the way so when it comes to our healing when it comes to love even our connections with family sometimes we have to give ourselves extra compassion and grace and a fuck ton of time while using all of our resources and things like that and recognize it's a marathon and not a sprint and a lot of times these core wounds of abandonment or betrayal or whatever the case might be they're a key factor in our life story and they do give us pivotal these operate as pivotal points into the integration of our purpose straight up. So that's beautiful. We never give up on love and we will always bet on our legacy. All right. That's what I'm getting. So I saw Hannah was in here. Hannah, do you want to, do you have questions about your love scenario? I know you said you were curious on it in general, but in interest of this being part of a podcast, being a Q and a, um, if you can come with questions, that would be helpful for more people you know, give us more to relate to as a group. But also if anybody else has like relationship questions, definitely throw them in there because it's about time for that. We can even pull cards about it. We got 20 more minutes. What's in the future for your love life? You know, the only way to predict your future is to create it for yourself, love. So that's my response to that one. He said, you'll never give up on love. That's good. And she says she's involved with several divine men currently. That's beautiful. All different styles of love. It's good to be surrounded by divine masculine energy. I'm happy for you. Feel you, Janelle. I see you. I'd love to know. Okay. I would love to know about how to further develop your relationship with your angels. Call on them and meditate. Like call on the angels and then meditate in that order and see what that does for you. Yeah, like know how to do it. So this one says, I have Pluto conjunct my Venus. Any thoughts? Pluto conjunct Venus is powerful love and is deep love and it's craving for intensity. And this says that, you know, you're probably going to. 
seek control in your love on some level. Wish to have a soulmate who shares congruent purpose with you. But this also says that your love nature could be quite possessive slash jealous. Because by your, and there's nothing wrong with that in itself. It's just a, Vino, a Venus Pluto person in any aspect, a lot of times wants the love to transform themselves. So there can be this like internal resistance to love because you have to surrender to somebody else. And even if you like the person, it's intimidating to have to be partnered with somebody that you perceive as better than you because you kind of perceive love and power as the same thing and then get them confused. That's Venus Pluto in a nutshell. <laughs> he said, wow, yeah, dude, it's fucked up, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that connects to you somehow. Because you always got to look at the aspect. Like, those Venus-Pluto aspects are crazy. You're lucky you got the conjunction and not the square. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Oh, this is really self-aware. This wasn't a question, but this one says that I think I'm avoidant and anxious at the same time. And I don't think that I'll attract a healthy relationship until I address it about myself. And that's beautiful. You know, more self-awareness comes with uh, more responsibility, more power. And hey, man, you know, if, if you have both those attachment styles, that's that tells me that you definitely tried love out plenty of times to know that about yourself. So you got some beautiful things coming in your future for sure. Let's see. Try to make sure I read all this. Ooh. <laughs> Said I'm a Scorpio, so I've been told I've been doomed in that department. That's too funny. <laughs> you know, don't believe anything that doesn't empower you. People give Scorpios a bad rap. Like Scorpio and Gemini, I think, get the worst rap out of all the signs for no damn reason. So this person says, Vic said, do you had a cleanse? They had a cleansing today and they felt very dizzy after this. Is that normal? Yeah, it is normal. You may need to ground yourself a little bit more after you cleanse because, you know, when you cleanse, your energy goes up. You're basically not only clearing interference from your channel, a lot of times just moving the energy in itself can stimulate your chakras. And especially if you opened up some of your upper chakras, that can be kind of dizzying. So sometimes that's what happens. So this one says, any thoughts on twin flames and how we are really our own twin flame. I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of questions on twin flames. Like, what the fuck is it? How does it work? And honestly, I still can't say that I fully understand it, even though I've been questioning it for a long time. My understanding now, and uh, I think I think I'm with my twin flame. I'm in a very happy relationship, and. Here's where I, what I think a flame is. Mr. Meyer with the fire is going to tell you something about flames, okay? Let me tell you something about flames, man. And, and for the people watching on YouTube, let me tell you about flames, man. And just know that flame is the fire element. This is one of the basic components to all of life. And fire corresponds with the element of sight. It's our vision. And this also has a very spiritual dimension. You know, like fire, water, air, and earth. The inner flame talks about the essence of our soul. And in a romantic context, if we talk about twin flames, this would talk about twin souls on some level. And this in itself opens up a whole nother discussion. Because there are different types of souls. And you have to be intuitive and be able to travel internally to see and understand this type of stuff and not just take it on words. And I would not encourage anybody to just believe what the fuck I say, first of all. But I'm just saying that it's been seen that there are different types of souls you may have. And keep this in mind, like the cosmology would be understood this way, that because there's millions of people, billions of people, that stands to reason there would be billions of different souls. 
and not every soul is the same, same way that all people are not the same. So based on probability and actual physics and math, certain souls are created at certain times and maybe even in certain locations in the astral or the spiritual realm, basically. And that would say that eventually you will find these certain souls that are from the same place at the same time. And that in itself could be considered like a twin soul relationship where, you know, you're going to have basically the same evolutionary conditions, but you'll have different experiences as well. So a lot of times these people may kind of manifest in your life as soulmate, perhaps, or you have a lot of deep spiritual connection and experience with them as well. But um, when it comes to a twin flame, what I really think this is, is the romantic relationship that you find as a devotion to your purpose. That's what I think a twin flame is, is this is like the soulmate that most people are talking about inadvertently or directly is that when you put the bullshit aside, when you really commit yourself to divine union, this is the one you truly attract. The one that corresponds with your inner vision. The one who, when they shut their eyes and they look at their inner flame, they fucking see you. It's that person. That's what I understand a twin flame to be. All right. And that's why I found my partner was I stopped looking for love outside of myself. I kept looking inside of myself because I got too fucking frustrated with life and people throwing me violently back inside of myself because I kept looking outside of myself. And, you know, it was the law of attraction and there was some timing and polarity that really manifested into this. And I also don't really believe that there's only one twin flame or one soulmate or that it's just, you know, one and done. And if you had a great connection, that's all it is. Because I've also, I don't like the twin flame narrative. I'm going to be quite honest, guys, because everybody has a different idea of what this is. And a lot of people are very disempowered by the narrative. And I see a lot of people who find somebody that they think is their twin flame. And it's really just a karmic lesson. They never fucking let go of this person. So, like, and it's really not a shared purpose. It's an abdication of responsibility and escape in one's own life. And it's bull. And it's a nuanced discussion, so I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, you know, but it just takes a lot of self-honesty to really reflect, is this your purpose or is this a distraction? Or was this just part of the journey? Because it's deeper than that. I don't want to polarize things unnecessarily, guys, but I'm telling you, like, love really is one of the most special things. And one of the most harmful things you can do is seek outside of you for something you can provide. While we need other people, we're going to need to have some form of connection and relationship outside of ourselves. This does kind of speak to how do we do this and for what reasons? And that's what's really important. And no matter what, no matter how deep, no, no matter how spiritual or how in tune you are with a partner, communication is always going to be necessary. And even your soulmate can't read your mind 100% of the time. So you're going to need to be able to communicate your needs effectively and honestly. I think we've all hurt for, for love and hurt because of love. As long as we learn, that's what's required. What up, beautiful people? Yeah, we're looking for conscious partnership. That's beautiful. Well put. That's what this is about. What does the table say? Oh, this is, uh, these are Oracle cards. I wasn't really reading this one, but it said, we, we know this isn't over. We know it isn't over. You know, love is eternal, man. So just understand that love is never lost. <laughs> You're good. Love is never lost, guys. So that's another thing, because we I got into um, the Venus-Pluto thing before, and I know that was pretty interesting, but a very fast conversation. A lot of people relate, man, even though there's no Venus-Pluto aspect prominent right now, man. You know, it's, it's hard to uh, hard to release sometimes the past or we may have a tendency to cling on to things that are dead already or dying. So a karmic relationship, you know, sometimes words can be limiting. So that's a good question. And sometimes I feel like it needs more elaboration. But what I understand karma to be is. You know, the law of cause and effect in action, it's the reaction to. 
the energies that we create. And, and that says all relationships are karmic, truly. Karmic relationships with the nuance of this conversation really refers to certain relationships you manifest to give you higher understanding of yourself and your true responsibilities. And that's really what we're talking about, you know? Not everybody will see it the same way, but that's, I think, what we're all kind of, the consensus means about it. Is that, you know, I think that makes sense. We might not need any more elaboration. And let me just put it this way, even more simple. It's like, and you're welcome. Yeah, so what it, what it kind of means is like, for a lot of people, there's only two types of relationships, you know, where you either have the soulmate or you have the karmic, you know? That's how I see a lot of people looking at this discussion is like, you're either the one or you're the lesson in between me and the one. <laughs> and some of us are like, damn, how many fucking karmics are there? You know? Yeah, there's a big difference between dharma and karma. Dharma is what you're meant to do and karma is the shit you do in the process or that accrues along the way. Of you truly serving your real purpose. So I don't want love to be a distraction for anybody. And that's kind of one thing that I kind of feel re required to say or obliged to say again is that, you know, with this, with this vibrational increase to love, this is Venus conjunct Uranus vibes, guys, with the vibrational increase in our love nature, we will seek deeper connection. That in itself is neutral. But Without a true understanding of ourself and our space within the world, we may abdicate responsibilities to other people as a result of this energy. Why? Because we feel unloved or we feel unspecial or we feel like we aren't important or people don't see us or acknowledge us or, you know, we feel like there's part of us missing or something like that, you know? No, really what this is, is about the true embrace of self and then the true connection with the world. Okay. And that is beautiful. This uh this one says karma and dharma do sit at the same table. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I feel like they're both unavoidable. They're they're both natural parts of life. It's important you've done the work in healing yourself to enable a healthy relationship. 100%. Both karma and dharma laugh and keep speaking on hushed tones. That's sweet. Yeah, that's a very balanced, integrated perspective. I love that. We feel a strong sense that good things are coming. I love that. You guys have good energy, good attitudes, and, and that makes a world of a difference in your experience for real. The latter more than the first. Good attitudes. Positive embrace of life. So while growth is uh, while growth is not always painless, guys, I want to remind the world that love is not really supposed to hurt. Growth can be painful, but love in and of itself doesn't need to be a painful force. And sometimes that can be a bad indication in itself because we are biologically conditioned on a survival level to pursue pleasure and avoid pain. While we don't want to fall into the needless embrace of hedonism, we do need to be very clear that some things hurt because they're bad. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> some things hurt because they're good. But, uh, you know, there's a difference. And it's this context dictates strategy. But shit, you know? Don't allow people to hurt you, man. And there's a difference between hurt and harm. Don't allow people to harm you. If you're into that sadomasochism bdsm whatever the fuck you know you do you on your consensual uh hurt none timing who gives a fuck to each their own if it harms none you know i don't even think that was the point of this live but sometimes this shit might come up on a venus day q a we got four four to five minutes left of this podcast guys so i hope that if you uh have good questions to ask you ask them now or you hold them to the next time man it hurts so good. <laughs> what other love messages we got, man? And for everybody listening on YouTube, can you please drop that like? 
and just give us some interaction on this video if you made it to this end. Can you put the word papaya in the comments so I know that you made it to the end of the video? That would mean the world to me, man. Because some people fall asleep to my videos. Some people watch them intently through the through the full thing. So if if I see the word papaya in my comments, I'm going to know that you were aware, aware at this part of the video, okay? How do you spell papaya? You did a good job. <laughs> I had papaya in a smoothie today. Damn, this is crazy. Man, oh man, I don't even want to say this for some people because this is not for everybody. And um, that makes me want to like hold the message back and, and, and neutralize it before I share it. So just understand that this message isn't for everybody. It's an Oracle card. So like, you know, take what resonates and leave every fucking thing else and do not believe a message that doesn't empower you guys. This card says deception. You aren't the only one. And I think we talked about this earlier, guys. Don't trick yourself into thinking that there's only one person out there for you. Because here's the deal, guys. Even if, and some of us have had this experience, even if you meet your soulmate, the person you're meant to be with, the person that aligns with you on vision, like twin flame energy, like they see you internally, you have a spiritual connection, you have a mental connection, you've got to have an emotional connection and a physical connection. If the person is unwilling to cooperate, that's not the one, you know, but you may kind of feel like that is the one. So the point just being is that, you know, don't kid yourself into thinking that there's only one person. I was reluctant to share that car with somebody because I know there's a lot of people in very happy and stable and successful relationships. And they don't, the message for them is not that someone is cheating on them. That's not the message, but you know, uh, if you, if you are listening to this video and you've been kind of seeking intuitive guidance, or confirmation someone might be running around behind you maybe that message was for you i don't usually like to give that message out for free if i'm not reading for someone who's not invested in in what clarity i'm giving because i don't like to spread negativity and shit man but uh there's nothing inherently negative about this if that's truly what's going on like you needed to be alerted on something but for those where this is not the case they don't need that fear is why i was reluctant so i think Everybody is understanding what's going on. <laughs> this person says, hey, if you need a, if you need a little pick me up, if you need to be cheered up, just go on YouTube and watch Jerry Springer. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. So this live is going to be reposted to YouTube, y'all. Venus Day Q&A number 10. We got about a minute later. Are we good? Yeah, you're good. Do you have questions? You have one minute left, guys, so. I would just recommend everybody to grab a spot in simplified astrology or simplified tarot and really use these tools to better yourself. I got many things I'm offering. I do personal readings while I'm on here. I got to do my due diligence, let you guys know what I do. Just because if you're seeking clarity, you should be seeking that within yourself. So what I have to offer is tools. You know, the tarot, I can teach you how to use the Oracle and understand the intuitive basis for the tarot cards and how they're derived and also the intuitive basis for astrology and this in itself can help you so much when it comes to your personal life or your love life yeah love is never wasted you said is love ever wasted i would say um i don't want to say it's never wasted but on some level you may kind of feel upset sometimes when you give love in a way that doesn't invest in you in the same time you should have some return on your investment is what I'm saying is that um, that's a good question. And I don't know if I have a definitive answer for it because I really think that is one of those more nuanced ones as a general optimistic answer. I don't think love is ever wasted because whatever you put in the universe will come back to you on some level. So whether it's a week from now, a month from now, 10 years from now or three lifetimes from now, man, it'll come back to you straight up. It will. It may take some time. So I love you guys. I hope that this video brightened your day. Venus Day Q&A. Number 10, tune in next week for number 11 and maybe consider ringing the bell on TikTok if you want to be part of the live feed because that seems like the way we're going to do it from now on.
or at least for the time being, until we make more changes to the setup and such. So I'm going to stop this recording and I will see you guys on the flippity flip. Blessed be.